Hi guys, my name is Tayo and I started this second Pushman challenge of learning how to kitesurf. In this video I want to present to you my 7 day kitesurf progression and how I reached my goal. You can learn from the mistakes I've made before besides all those informative how-to videos on YouTube. So I booked this one-on-one -on -one training at the surf school in Norddeich. They did a very good job, I can highly recommend this place, sitting right next to our rough but beautiful North Sea. Unfortunately, on my first official day, the training has been cancelled as it really started to snow again in mid of April. So I spent a few hours with reading articles, watching YouTube videos with a big bunch of tips and tricks and you may love, I also also played the Kiteboard Hero app on my smartphone that indeed uh, was very helpful to get a common understanding of the basic kite controls. Lessons learned number one, all those investigations were very helpful and all those tips and tricks really paid off during my courses. So I can only recommend to dive into the topic before you even start. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and let's go! On my first day the wind direction and speed were brilliant for beginners with 14 to 19 knots of wind even if it was a little cold with both air and water temperatures of about 6 degrees. As usual for beginners we decided to go with a big board and a small kite so picked a Cabrina board with 150 times 45 centimeters and a Cabrina switchblade kite with 10 square meters. At first we went through the basics such as rescue measures briefly and I got my hands on very fast by setting up the kite, bar and board and adjusting the foot straps. However, I did not start the kite on land due to safety reasons. Instead, I had to relaunch in the water. Here I learned how to steer the kite into the different wind zones, made some power dives on my first buddy drags and then it got serious by trying my first water starts. After a couple of very cautious attempts, I made my first meters with the board. All felt very sketchy and I had to struggle especially moving with my left foot in the front, a skateboarder would say, the regular stance. All my theoretical preparation the day before was beneficial as you don't have enough time to think about what you're doing when everything comes together. So let me share the next three lessons learned with you. Number two, you need to get in shape because even walking through the water with your kite can be very exhausting. Advice number three is to take lessons when you really want to start. For me it was brilliant to have this one-on-one -on -one training as I'm experienced with water sports such as sailing and wakeboarding. Others may choose a group training that usually allows a little rest every now and then. And today's last tip number four, don't be impatient with the controls as the kite needs time to react for at least one to two seconds. That's about it for day two, coming straight from the water. Uh, today the conditions were pretty similar to what we found yesterday, but we've taken another kite, um, this time a 12 square meter one, a little bit more power in the kite. I reached my goal, my personal goal for today, that means I wanted to improve my regular stance, meaning going to the left after the water start. I got confident with um, steering the kite, my position on the board, uh, it felt way better than yesterday. I got the kite and the board together. I want to give to you two advices, uh, let the bar go whenever um, it is needed. So once you feel uh, unsafe or in an uncontrolled situation, just let the bar go, take the pressure off the kite and it will help a lot. The other thing is that you should not resist too much on your board. Once you did the water start in each direction, go a little bit more downwind instead of trying to get as much upwind as possible, just to give you this little extra speed that helps with getting more control and you can still get back into um, upwind direction. In general, it was a very nice session and I really enjoyed. Catch you tomorrow. Day number three worked out very well. We had 22 knots of steady wind and picked a smaller board with 1.35 meters and a 9 square meter kite. My coach taught me to avoid too much weight on my back foot. I concentrated on bringing myself above the center of the board instead of leaning backwards too much and thus losing speed. So I improved my entire body positioning and gained speed and control. 
The water start improved significantly and both directions felt already pretty comfortable. In one situation I inverted the kite and lost control of it, so that I had to pull on my quick release, the second safety measure after letting the bar go. And that brings me to my today's advices with familiarizing yourself with the particular self-rescue measures in order to be prepared for different kinds of emergency situations. Practice how to use the quick release and especially how to bring everything back together. I also learned that one should not get frustrated after falling. Take a risk and don't be afraid too much. Get back on the board and improve your skills by being open-minded to new things. It's day number four. I just had a look on the internet and it said it is about 11 knots of wind. So I talked to the surf school. They told me it's way more so we can go into the water. Uh, another lessons learned for you. Never trust just one source when it is about finding the wind. I grab my stuff and let's go. Another awesome session. Today we switched over to a 14 square meter kite as there was a little less wind compared to the other days. It was all about tagging and I was able to do maybe seven or eight very good tags. So I'm absolutely satisfied with the results. My tips to you are first of all, that you really need to enjoy. You really need to have fun as it is mainly all about it. The other thing is that once you try to do the tag, is to uh, get hard on the edge of your board, make a proper curve and within this move you really need to get your kite from two o'clock in a steady move right into your dive, um, your power dive. After a while you get used to it, it's just about practicing and as I said having a lot of fun. And more important than everything else is to get friends by your side and enjoy the sports with someone else together. So there's another push mentee who started um, his journey today. I enjoyed it. Hang really. loose. <laughs> Day five and light wind conditions on set. Uh, my coach told me by my surprise that we are going to train some jumps or the basic techniques. Uh, we have taken 15 square meter kite. I rode a smaller board to improve my agility and prepare myself for edging more aggressively. Then my coach explained to me the three steps of learning how to jump and I want to share them with you. First of all, I needed to ride a curvature by edging the board more upwind direction. As a second step, he taught me how to steer the kite without any board. So I had to steer the kite from 45 degree angle up to a 12 o'clock position. And right before I hit this 12 o'clock position, I needed to pull the bar that lifted me out of the water. Similar to an ollie with a snowboard, I needed to um, pop the board with my back foot out of the water to do this little jump. I spent my time with practicing a lot, was not able to do any jump, but I'm confident that I will make it one day. Further, my transitions got way better and I uh, had the time to start and land the kite a couple of times just for practicing purposes. choppy conditions on day six. It was very gusty, a strong breeze, 20 to 25 knots. I've taken 10 square meters of kite. Most of the time I was concentrated on compensating the incoming waves, but I did what was planned and that was popping myself out of the water. As the spot was pretty crowded, I was very cautious uh, as I did not want to tangle up with any other kite. My daily tip to you is stay out of the crowded areas, familiarize yourself with the international regulations of uh, preventing collisions at sea, and of course put yourself into a resting position, like in a water start position, once you feel unsafe.
Day number seven was the most interesting one so far. I was taught by a new coach and had this feeling of moving backwards from now on. We did not talk about jumping even once. Instead, we started with the basics, such as body drag, water start and staying upwind. From that point on, I was a bit irritated, lost my confidence and felt like I don't know anything about this sport anymore. But as this is a challenge, you need to stand up again, be open-minded for productive critics and that was indeed the key to a successful session in the end. We improved my body position and thus my ability to stay upwind. I brought my upper body closer to the adjuster and applied more weight onto my front foot. As a result, I went higher upwind than ever before. Furthermore, we practiced some basic techniques, such as readjusting the quick release, the foot positioning during the water start, as well as weight distribution during a transition. This new perspective was very efficient and that's what brings us to my last tips for you with tip number 14. Don't rush through your progress too fast, take your time for each individual step. And number 15. Allow others to share their knowledge, be open-minded and enjoy your steep learning curve. After seven two-hour sessions, I can say that I learned at least the fundamentals of kitesurfing and I'm good enough to practice further on. I fell in love with this board as expected. I will definitely continue what I just started and it's definitely going to be a part of my life as I'm absolutely impressed by its freedom, by the unlimited possibilities to push your boundaries and of course breathing fresh salty air of mother nature. I can only recommend you to start your own kitesurf journey, you will for sure love it and if you enjoyed this video please like, share and subscribe to our channel as sharing is caring.